but your voice, your face, your breasts. Wow. <laughs> oh god, Rumple. Shut up. Hello everyone and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. In the last one we learned that Rod had the mermaid curse and we also found a strange man who was picked up in the middle of the night and we also learned he had the Rumpelstiltskin curse. And we also found out he is basically one gigantic flirt. Let's see what happens with this. So here we are with Parfait. Let's see what she has to say. Rumpelstiltskin. What is that fairy tale about? Delora does not do a good job of hiding her, her laughter. She snorts and I cross my arms, embarrassed. Mother burned the fairy tales in that palace before I got the chance to read them all. Fine, fine, I'll keep it short. Once upon a time there was a girl that was said to be able to spin straw into gold. The king found her and locked her up in a tower. He said he wouldn't let her out until she turned all the straw in the room into gold. But the girl was just a regular human girl. She knew she would never be able to turn a straw into gold and feared that she would be locked up forever. That was when an odd little man appeared before her and offered to do the job for her if she gave him something in return. Now if you remember from last episode, you know exactly what that was and it's pretty freaking horrid. The girl gave him her necklace and the man spent the rest of the night spinning the straw into gold. However, the girl wasn't released. The second night she was given more straw to spin and the little man appeared once more. This time, she gave him her ring. On the third night, the king ordered her to spin the straw one last time and if she did, she would be released and made his queen. Now see, seriously, that is disturbing. He basically abducted her, forced her to prove that the rumors surrounding her were true by spinning all the straw into gold, and as a reward to him, he would make her his queen. That is sick. However, that night the girl had nothing left to give the little man, so they made an agreement. He would spin the straw into gold for her, so long as she gave him her first child. I personally never understood why the girl would want to marry the king in the first place. See, I am... I am really down with Parfait. Hush, I'm trying to tell a story here. Years passed and Queen finally gave birth to her first child. That night, the odd little man returned and demanded his due, but the Queen did not want to give up her child. The man then said that he wouldn't take the child if the Queen was able to guess his name in three days. The man's name was Rumpelstiltskin. Did she guess it? Oh yeah, the night before her time was officially up, the queen was drawn to the forest by the sound of a little voice. She saw the little man celebrating his upcoming victory, singing about how nobody had or ever would guess his real name, which had been, which was Rumpelstiltskin. He does not sound particularly smart. So agrees the general populace. Sometimes I wonder how Hans was able to come up with such tall tales. Well, the marching is opening soon. I expect another busy day. Especially busy for you, Ellie. You need to start coming up with a good with good deeds. The Amnesia Casanova was allowed to stay at the marching with the other boarders. Because he still seemed capable, Parfait sent him to work as one of the marching servers. Anissa's protest that he remained in bed fell on deaf ears. Parfait couldn't very well throw him out, not while well knowing that he had nowhere to go. I would be incapable of showing him such kindness given all the nonsense he spelts at us. Uh, that was only a little bit of nonsense. But true to that, it was insane flirting, so... The people that freak of the march and began to steadily ignore me altogether. Like I do not exist. It is better than the stares and the hateful looks. See, we still don't freaking know why she was hated. Like, this is really bothering me. But then again, we're in chapter 1, so... I guess if we keep playing, we'll eventually be told. Rumple, you weren't here to flirt. <gasps> oh, do you see her forehead? She actually has vein marks. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen that. This lovely lady is unattended. Oh my god, this guy. This guy, really. Sir Rumple, please, you're making me blush. Because a man couldn't remember his name, he fashioned one from his own curse. Rumple. I think it suits him. <laughs> now if you remember, Ellie thought Rumpelstiltskin was, wasn't very smart, so yeah, that's why she thinks Rumpel suits Rumpel here. That's not his name though, but it's Rumpel. Let's move on. I will never understand Parfait. This amorous waste of space is about as useful as karma. I've returned. Oh my god. I love the sparkles. They suit karma. 
Speak of the devil. Did you miss me? Karma had left abruptly yesterday, saying that she had something very important to take care of. Waltz trails in after her now, carrying several boxes in his arms. Why am I carrying these? Because you made me run that errand for you at the toy shop the other day. Oh, so that's why Karma was at doll shop. Why was... wait, why was Waltz getting a doll? Huh. Maybe that would be explained later on. And because gentlemen carry things for ladies. I guess so. <laughs> why not? I'm going to drop them now. Oh. Those boxes contain very important contents. <laughs> Welcome home, Miss Karma. Nice to see you've survived the trip, Waltz. Thank you, Anise. Oh. <gasps> Wait a minute. These two are absolute flirts. I wonder what happened. So, this is our new housemate. We have not had the opportunity to meet. I am... Oh. Shock. What happened? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh god, let's see what happens here. We are all surprised when Rumpel suddenly reaches out to grab Karma's hand. My life before this moment has been a depressing monochrome. Now that you have entered my bleak existence, I see everything in beautiful, blazing color. And nothing shines more brightly, more vividly, than you. Rumpel, you old dog, you. Oh, Karma doesn't look too happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> I am Rumple, my sweet. Let us talk of marriage? Wow, this guy likes to move fast. I stare at Karma, waiting for her to flirt back. Yeah, me too. I want to see it. At the very least, I expect her to wave Rumple away for being a fool. But she remains eerily silent. Answer, my angel. I beg you. Rumple, I don't think you're getting anywhere with her. Oh, maybe not. Keep. Say the word, and it is done. Your filthy hands off me. <gasps> she smacked him, or punched him, or something. <laughs> oh, poor Rumple. He's just a very loving guy. Not again. Oh my god, she actually kept... The look is still there. She is pissed off. Aw. I would never be interested in the likes of you. Ouch. Go on, lad. Give him a good beating, like the one you gave to me. My queen, there is no need... You're gonna get punched again, dude. <laughs> no need for violence. What? Did you call me? Please calm down. Rumble is still recovering. What is going on? Karma is a man. Wait, what? When did that happen? No. Yeah. No. What? Wait, Karma's cursed. What's her... What's... Okay. I guess we can't use her anymore. What's his curse? Weird. Doesn't take kindly to being flirted with. Or proposed to. She... Is a man? Yeah. Apparently. Your voice, your face, your breasts. Wow. <laughs> oh god, Rumple. Shut up. Ow. Nice one, Delora. Nice one. That's what you're focusing on, pervert. <laughs> I worship all aspects of female form, but my particular favorite has always been... Wow, he just doesn't give up. Oh, another one. Ow! Do yourself a favor and shut up. I would never have known, but why would he do this? Wait, wait. No, Karma has to be cursed. I don't think he- I don't think Karma has a choice in this. I think- Oh, <gasps> wait a minute, we saw the nobleman back in episode 2, was it? No, episode 3. And the nobleman and Karma looked exactly the same. I wonder if it's- I wonder if it's cursed that actually splits up their genders, like, you transform at night to be a man and stay- a woman during the day. I wonder if that's what happened. But then again, what curse would that be? Don't look at me like that. I have my reasons. Is it because of their curse? Yes. So I knew it. I? I am undone. 
hope my heart is in pieces. You knew him for ten minutes. For those who can hear the music of their heart, like I, it takes only a look to fall madly, irretrievably in love. Okay, I can't make fun of him for that. <laughs> that was beautiful. I must leave. My heart will need time to heal. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The march attracts all sorts, doesn't it? That one is entirely Parfait's fault. Wow. Alright, alright, nothing to see here. Back to work. Yeah, that was, uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> I hope there's a lot more scenes like that. Oh wait, shoot, what was it? What did I say? I'm stone shocked from what I learned earlier. Karma, a man. It is not fair that he is so beautiful as a woman. If the female population of Angeal knew the truth, Karma would be hunted down for making the rest of us pale in comparison. That's pretty shallow of you, Ellie. Anise, being good, I suppose, prepared a special lunch to welcome the newest march and boarders. We have all been invited to the private dining room. Oh, who's here? Oh, Rod, hello! Excuse me, is Lady Parfait here? Prince Rod, perfect timing, please join us for lunch. I only came to talk to you, Lady Parfait. But I'm hungry and I have no wish to make you wait while I eat. Come join us. Please, your highness, I've made too much, as usual. You must help us finish. Seriously, and niece, she is like the ultimate good girl. Well, well, the ultimate human good girl. And Parfait looks like the ultimate, ultimate and good fairy. Very well. A cursed princess and a cursed prince. What an eccentric collection of friends you have, Lady Parfait. I wouldn't say they were eccentric, necessarily. You're the most eccentric one here, Rumpel. Really now? Wow, looks like you took that as a compliment. I sit silently in my chair. I am uncomfortable around so many people. Even when mother was alive, I had all my meals alone, since my parents were always too busy to sit down for meals with me. Oh, that's sad. The meals with Ophelia and her children were always so awkward and silent. Somehow the atmosphere here is lively and friendly, even though I barely know anyone here. Is something wrong? Excuse me? You've barely touched your food. Don't you like it? Dolores said this was one of your favorites. I'm just not used to eating with company. That's all. They say that sharing a meal brings the family closer together. Hey, Garland's smiling. Neat. Garland. What? 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 Why is Garland in trouble for? I apologize. What? I don't get it. Jurian, what's going on? Closer together, huh? So, have you made any progress on how to do those good deeds, princess? There's no way I am admitting that I do not even know how to complete one. Oh, I forgot you're not so good on the doing good front. You are not very helpful. Why don't you ask someone to teach you how to do good? Teach you how to do good, that's a good suggestion. What? Well, that's not something you hear every day. As in, take some kind of lessons? If you're having so much trouble on your own, you should ask someone to give you advice or teach you. It's as simple as that. Hmm, that'd be neat. What is this I hear? I don't know if we want Karma to teach us anything. Um, okay, what is this I hear? The princess needs advice? Well then, she is in luck. I happen to give the most excellent advice, and believe me when I say I can teach almost anything. Karma? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say Karma anymore. <laughs> it's just... Karma? Okay, next. Oh god, not you. The princess is indeed lucky, as I am available for teaching duties. No doubt I'd be the better choice, as I don't go about deceiving the world. <gasps> oh, look at that! His heart is broken, and he is spiteful. <laughs> oh, poor Rumpel. Excuse me. Oh, the electricity. It's sparky. From one side of flirting to bitter enemies, and all in a span of a few hours. The man broke my heart. Wow, Rumpel, you fell in love with karma. It's your own fault, you broke your own heart. Anyway, I'd also be happy to help you in any way I can, princess. 
and I'm sure your stepbrother would be happy to help as well. Uh, he doesn't seem particular, particularly inclined to help, so let's see what happens. I don't think I would make the best teacher for this sort of thing. Wait, 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 wait. Anise? I have to say this. We have to say this to her right now. She is by far the goodest person here. And I'm pretty sure I made I made up the word goodest. I only teach others how to fight. Never mind the fact that Jiren herself still struggles to be good. <laughs> what? You're lucky, aren't you? So many people are willing to help you. Why? Hmm? Why are you all willing to help me? That's what we do at the Marchin. We help each other. Lesson number one, doing good means helping whenever one can. Just let any of us know if you want our help. Trust no one but yourself. You need not care for anyone but yourself. Those must be mantra words from her mother. That, this is what mother and the last few years have taught me. See, I was right. Mother. Bad mother. I've always been alone and it's easier that way. And yet, these strangers, these people that I've only known for a few days, are so willing to help me when they will gain nothing in return. Is this the goodness I was meant to see? Father? <gasps> oh yeah, that's right. He said that all the way back in episode 2. How can I even begin to trust and care for others when I have forgotten how to do so? I am slowly beginning to understand what I must do. But what must you do? What must you do? Ooh, we're in chapter 2. Neat. I don't see why this is necessary. Of course this is necessary, princess. You work to show you can be useful. What's going on? For the last half hour, Parfait and Delora have been debating what chores they want to give me. Ah, her, her work. I cannot believe they are seriously going to make me work, like a commoner. No freeloaders at the margin, remember? And you can't pull the princess card anymore now that you're a homeless peasant. Being demoted to a homeless peasant is not my fault. If you really think about it, it was a, it was kind of me to demote you. Seriously. Yes, we are on Team Delora as usual. So, whatever Delora says, we do. Stop teasing her, Delora. Ellie has had a lot thrown at her already. I'm only speaking the truth. Besides, working to live is a commoner's way of life, but at least it's rewarding. But if you do nothing, you get nothing. No food, no clothes, no bed. You are no longer Princess Ellie. Life here at the margin is comfortable and you need to work for comfort. Remember that. Oh, looks like she's given up here. What you do is your choice, Princess. Do I even have a choice? Nope, you do not. Not really, no? Let's see. How about cooking duties? No way, she'd burn a salad. Wow. Would she really burn a salad? Pretty, um, that's pretty, t that's, that's quite the talent if she can. She could be a receptionist. Then we'd lose all of our customers. That's, that's probably true. <laughs> I'm right here, you know. Sorry. Do you have any useful skills at all? As a princess, I had servants who did everything for me. They cleaned my room, helped me dress. How am, I so ex how am I expected to possess skills for things I have never done? Aha! Hmm? I found the perfect job for our Cinderella. And what would that be? Ooh! A spell! Ooh, it's a pretty broom. With a ribbon. That's cute. Ta-da! Ellie will be in charge of sweeping the marching floors. What? Perfect. Even she should be able to do that. Could you, princess? I refuse. Wow. Are you serious, Ellie? Come on. Just a little bit of sweeping. But look, I even put a cute little ribbon on the broom just for you. It's your very own special broom. <laughs> Ellie has a special broom. Thank you, Parfait. A princess does not clean. Oh, she doesn't get it yet. She's not a princess. Hard-headed as ever. Don't worry, I have a fix for this. Oh, an another spell. Oh boy. Oh, look at it go. Oh boy, I'm getting dizzy. Ugh, better read. Suddenly the broom flies into my hands. I am, help I am pulled helplessly along as the thing begins to sweep the floors. I try to pull my hands away, but they may as well be glued to the broom. They do not budge. 
What have you done? You should be thanking me. I'm helping you with your duties. Delora, isn't this a little too much? Oh, nonsense. The princess is learning useful new skills. Mr. Broom will teach her everything she needs to know. <laughs> oh, Mr. Broom. I like Mr. Broom. If the floor is dirty, Mr. Broom will come to life and start sweeping, and it will not stop until the floors are spotless. What? Come on, Parfait. You've got time for a cup of tea. But... She'll be fine. A little sweeping never killed anyone. That's true. You are dreadful. Enjoy your time with Mr. Broom. <laughs> uh, I don't really pour, I don't really feel sorry for Ellie. Wait! 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 Did they really just leave? Oh. Hey, s slow down! The broom begins to sweep faster. Despite my protest, I am still forced, like a puppet, to sweep the floors with grudging tenacity. Oh god. Ooh, sparkly. I like sparkly. <laughs> the broom looks so proud. Ah, oh, I'm glad to see the broom's happy. I can barely catch my breath after that. Princess, Parfait sent me to check. Huh? What are you so shocked about? How lovely. It's so clean I can see my reflection on the floorboards. I am impressed. Okay, 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 okay. His curse is most likely something to do with narcissism. Do not even think about stepping into this room with your dirty shoes. Goodness, I didn't know prin I didn't know princesses could be such terrifying creatures. You are aware that the margin is opening soon, yes? The floor isn't going to stay clean forever. Then do not open a margin. <laughs> I do sympathize with you, princess. It's difficult adjusting to the commoner's life. What would you know about that? More than you think. Oh, the only way Karma would know is if Karma himself was not a peasant to begin with. What? Oh, did I let that slip? That was my mistake. Karma just smiles at me, his eyes gleaming with playful mischief. He is definitely hiding something. My hands are red and sore from all the sweeping I've done today. I remember the Salvanese offered me when I first woke up in my room. Surely, that will help somewhat. I apply it to my hands and find, to my surprise, that it's very effective. Most of the redness quickly fades along with the pain. Is this what my life will be like if I do not break the curse? Forced to work day in and day out? I cannot let things stay as they are. I must act. I lay down to rest. Tiredness falls upon me like a heavy, suffocating blanket. I close my eyes and feel myself shift into the darkness of sleep. Despite having slept for hours, I am still tired when I wake up. I glance up back at my hands and remember the Sal's effectiveness. Whatever niece gave me really works. I should ask her to make me more. I feel like this is not the last time I will need it. I must act quickly. The sooner I break the curse, the better. The people who offered to help me are all here. Whom should I ask for help? I don't know about Rod. Rumpel. I really just want to pick him because, well, just because he's he's foolish and he's, he's pretty funny. Karma. Karma used to be a noble person. You can definitely tell that Karma used to be noble. You know what? Let's go for Rumpel. Let's see what he has to say. I suppose I can ask Rumpel. Enough girls seem to like him, so he might have sound advice. I find Rumpel in between his orders and pull him aside. He looks oddly relieved. Ah, princess, you've saved me. Saved you? From a heinous overload of work. <laughs> ah, damn it, Rumpel. You're so silly. I am pretty sure Rumpel does less around here than me. At least I finished the work I am given, unlike Rumpel, who gets distracted by every little thing. Dear Ellie, if you called me here, then you must want to confess something to me. What? Perhaps you'll confess your undying love for me. No, no thank you. I scowled him and crossed my arms. I came to ask you for advice, but perhaps I'll go ask someone else. You came to ask my advice? Rumpel stares at me, clearly shocked. I guess it's because of out of all the people I would ask, he probably seems the least likely. Then I will assist, my sweet princess. No, stop. Shut up. <laughs> stop being weird. What kind of advice are you looking for? Perhaps something you'd like to learn. How to make a man swoon, or how to stroke the embers of the heart. Ooh, I want to learn how to stroke the embers of the heart. Is flirting the only thing that is ever on his mind? I came because I want you to teach me about goodness. 
goodness. But my sweet, all of the advice that I just suggested would teach you just that. Being romantic will not teach me how to do good. Rumpel dramatically places his hand over his heart. But being romantic is good. Quite true. Everyone, I want you to think about that. Think about why romance is a good thing. Don't you see the smiles on the lovely lady's faces when I speak with them? I cannot imagine why they smile like that. Rumpel's persistence is annoying, but it's silly, and it's nice, it's funny. Let's move on. To be romantic and loving, that is the epitome of goodness. Show someone affection and they will return it twofold. I can only stare at Rumpel as I wonder why I even decided to ask him. Or he could just be kind. Everyone is kind in their own way, princess. So what do you say? Perhaps you would like to practice on me. I'm sure your smile would brighten up my week. No, I am certain of it. I have work. <laughs> she just ditched him. I quickly turn and leave before Rumble can continue. If I have to be romantic to earn a good deed, I'd rather be cursed like this forever. I stare in horror at the floor. Gravel and sand are embedded between the floorboards. The wood beneath my feet is covered in a thick muck. Ew. <gasps> oh, look to the right, everyone. There it is. There's Mr. Broom. Uh-oh. Ellie, you better run. Oh, no. Hey, Mr. Broom's happy. <laughs> look at him go. Look at him go. Stop. I never thought I'd see this. The princess is actually sweeping. What? No. Parfait was here when Delora casted a spell. <laughs> I'd say it's more like the broom is sweeping, and the princess is just along for the ride. Lady Parfait, your orders have arrived. Where should I put them? At the back, please. Thank you. I glare Garland as he begins to move. Oh boy. You! Oh, r better run, Garland. You are turning the floor. Sorry. <laughs> wow, she scared a night away. That's pretty, uh, scary. <laughs> Garland dashes across the floor with long steps in an attempt to leave as few footprints as possible. This was Dolores doing, wasn't it? Isn't it? Is it obvious? This has witch having fun written all over it. Wow, this was fun for her? Nice. I need... Water. Wow, completely spotless. You are the worst. Hey, it's Mr. Broom again. Aw, Ellie, come on. Mr. Broom's just doing his duty. Don't be mad at the broom, princess. It is only trying to help. Yeah. Mr. Broom, I want you to be my romantic partner. It is doing nothing but making my life miserable. Okay, maybe not. I don't think you have a shot here. Lady Parfait, I must speak with you. I look for the witch that has just entered. She is a regular at the Marchant, and according to Parfait and Delora, a good witch. She orders tea here from time to time. She has mud on her shoes. Why is she glaring at me like that? I believe it's because of your shoes, dear. I have just cleaned the floor. Oh, I am sorry. I'll clean after myself right away. Good. Wow. I think she scared the witch. That is scary. Looks like these two are uh, pretty shocked, too. The princess is something else. I've never seen a witch so frightened of someone before. Yeah. The witch hurriedly cleans up the track she'd made, coming in before going to speak with Parfait. Even though Parfait says that Delora and this witch are good, I do not trust her judgment, especially not when she considers Delora, who ruined my life, a good person. Well, we'll see how much her life is ruined by the end of the story. I put the broom back in its resting place for double checking my work. Now that I am done, I can continue to work on breaking my curse. Whom should I ask for help today? Oh, jeez, okay. Hey, we should ask Rumble again. Let's see what happens if we ask him a second time. I find Rumble taking a break at one of the tables. Surprisingly, he is by himself and not surrounded by the usual blushing ladies. Oh, has he been flirted out? You are not surrounded by a flock of ladies. You must have done something to offend them. Rumpel looks at me, the surprise apparent on his face. Princess, have you come to mend my broken heart? Broken heart? Oh, was he rejected? You know, I think he's... <laughs> I think he's so stupid, but, but a silly romantic stupid. Um, yeah, so I, I do feel sorry if his heart gets broken. Excuse me. I was speaking with a lady here only hours ago when she told me that she was betrothed to someone else. That happened hours ago, and you're still sitting here? 
Rumpel places his chin on the palm of his hand, looking very tired. In mourning, the heart is a fragile thing, princess. Won't you help heal my shattered heart? Don't do it. He has a creepy look on his face. Rumpel stares at me when I do not answer. That would count as a good deed, you know. Uh, <laughs> helping you would count as a good deed? Doing things out of the kindness of your heart is a good deed, princess. The kindness of my heart. Why would I want to help you when you've done nothing for me? Kindness isn't a thing that needs to necessarily be returned, princess. Single instances of affection can make a heart lighter. Why does he always go through the trouble of making his words sound so much fancier? I will not help mend your broken heart because that would be an act of stupidity, not kindness. Hey. Okay, yeah, you're probably right, but it'll still be kindness. Rumble's shoulders slump as he frowns. Ah, now my heart is even more fragmented. You suffer from a broken heart every day you are rejected. Of course, because to pour your heart out to someone only to be rejected is a cruel fate, princess. You probably deserved rejection. What, with the way you flirt with everyone? So, no, I'm not going to help you. Deal with your own broken heart. Hey, holy crap. Ellie, you're just tearing me apart here. I turn around and walk away. Aw. Poor Rumple. The acts Rumple puts on are annoying. Aw, poor Rumple. A month has passed and I've yet to complete even one good deed. Not for any lack of trying, though. I've been asking around for advice on how to be a good person and received various answers. Ooh, flashback. What makes someone good? I'd say being selfless. Hey, wait a minute. Waltz, where the hell were you? We didn't even get you as an option. I think it's important that you consider another person's feelings. Patience. The ability to soothe even the most broken of hearts. Forget I asked. No, that was a good one. Bravery. Hmm. Is it brave to be kind? It's actually a thought provoker. Th Loyalty. You must be beautiful, both on the inside and out. Maybe just on the inside. Right. Looks like Ellie doesn't take karma or rumple seriously. Must I be all of those things in order to be good? According to Parfait, I cannot just pretend. It has to come from my heart. I place my hand on my chest and consider the steady pulse of my heartbeat. That will not be easy. I close my eyes, thinking of all the possible ways I might be able to break my curse. But in the end, my mind is blank. Mother, what am I supposed to do? No. 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 Ellie, your mother is what probably got you into this problem in the first place. She has not taught you how to do good, so you have to ignore her. A dream? Your personal feelings are nothing but a weakness for others to exploit. That is why you do not show them. You only show them that you are strong. Yes, mother. You must not let false kindness deceive you. People will use niceties to trick you into exploiting your weak emotions. But you can trust me, Ellie. I will never hurt you. I will never lie to you. I am all you need. I love you, Ellie. I love you too, mother. Oh, God. Her memories are so, like... Manipulative. Like her mother's. She's clearly manipulating Ellie into basically not trusting anyone. It's creepy and sad. How are those lessons of yours going? I hope you're not giving anyone a difficult time. I'm the only one having a difficult time. Have you tried pairing up with someone? Pairing up? Some of the people in the tavern pair up to assist each other. Two heads are better than one, as they say. It's not a bad idea, but the problem is with her. Who's going to volunteer to pair up with the Ice Princess? She has a point. People may not, may not glare at me anymore, but it does not escape me that I am still disliked. Most of the boarders at the margin volunteered to help her, remember? And I haven't heard any of them retract their offers. It's only a matter of time. Stop it, Delora. It's your choice, Princess. Pairing up is only a suggestion. I think it's a good suggestion. Would pairing up with someone really help break my curse? What if they end up being an annoyance instead? Princess? Um, excuse me, Princess. <gasps> I'm sorry for disturbing you, but you've just been staring at your tray and... The customer is waiting for his order. Of course. Wait, did she just do that? Like, without any argument? Ellie's changing. Delora has me helping Anise today. 
The margin is unexpectedly busy and they cannot keep up with all their customers. Stop daydreaming, Ellie. Food doesn't deliver itself. I do not need you to tell me that. Oh, well, looks like they're still, um, mean to each other. I stretch out on my bed. The stiff mattress does little to soothe my aching muscles. I was on my feet the entire day struggling to keep up with the steady stream of people that came into the Marchin. I have never seen the Marchin this busy. Wait, if the Marchin is busy, that means one of two things. Parfait and Delore are getting more allies, or there is a lot more people being cursed, or both. I roll onto my stomach and bury my face into my pillow. My arms and legs protest the movement. I refuse to live this type of life much longer. I need to break this curse as soon as possible. Why don't you pair up with someone? Pairing up might not be such a bad idea. Ooh, oh, oh. Ooh. Do we have a choice? Oh, we do get a choice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who the heck is that? I know this is Fritz. Who's that? I don't know. Who do we go for here? There's Rod, Karma, and Rumple. I think I would like to go with... Karma. Ooh. Wow, we're in Chapter 3 already. That felt short. So anyways, basically we we're pairing up with Karma and we're going to see how to break the curse and hopefully Karma can actually help us. I really would like to see how this all ends. So everyone, thank you very much for being Cinderella Phenomenon with me. If you're enjoying this, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. I'll be changing upload time to 12 p.m. Central Time, and I'm still going to be uploading this every Tuesday. And also, if you're really enjoying this and you're looking to support the channel, there are a bunch of links in the description to do just that. And of course, again, thank you very much for reading, and I'll see you all next week in Chapter 3.